Welcome back, ZeroK fans, to Nanalyze the Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're going to be having another exhibition match. This time it's going to be Izzeride versus Firepluck on Living Lands, with Izzeride going for spiders. So we are going to see the new spiders. This is on patch 172. So the brand new spiders, brand new fleas, which are slightly less good because they can't just decloak and fire. Like, So, okay, so here's the thing. The red circle is... Okay, it's hard to see. Sorry, the compression is going to make it hard to actually tell. The red circle is fire range. The blue circle is decloak radius. The blue circle used to be inside of the red circle, which meant that something could get in range before the flea decloaked. Now it can't. So the fleas are going to be a little bit harder. They're going to be less useful for ambushing. But they should still be fairly useful. I'm fairly certain that the range is still greater than, like, the explosion radius of a metal extractor. Which is what's important. Also, apparently there's some animation improvements for Clokybot, so we are going to see quite a few of the improvements of this patch, though, again, most of them are aesthetic. I am curious, though, what's going to happen with Fleas, because Fleas used to be considered like, the go-to unit for Spider Factory, and this nerf, it's a minor nerf. Again, it, it all it does is make is that Fleas have a harder time ambushing, but I think that is going to be a, a bit of a difference. I'm guessing we are going to see a, a bit less of a Flea focus going forward. Probably still some of them, especially for harassing around the sides, because Spider still needs a harassment unit, and that's what Flea largely does. I just don't expect we're going to be seeing pockets of Fleas dotted around, the, dotted around the map that then just eat anything that comes near them. But again, they're still powerful. They still have their damage. It's just... And the DPS has been slightly reduced, but they still have damage. Yeah, 42 DPS is still pretty strong for a unit at that cost. I mean, they deal more damage per second than they can take. They they cannot survive a second under their own fire even now, which is... That's the thing about fleas. They are the glassiest of cannons. Oh, These are unfortunately not focusing enough on their workers. As I was say, you, it, the workers are the most important thing. Like, you, your workers are the most important part of your game. If you do not have your workers, you you die. You lose. You have to make sure they don't die. At the same time, your opponents are going to be trying to kill your workers, so you got to be careful of that. And if you kill your opponent's workers, then they have a hard time. I'm trying to put that in a way that doesn't sound like I'm being totally anti-labor in the way I did last time. I know it was a bit of a joke, but it's like, I just don't want to get the wrong impression here. But yeah, killing workers is not something you want to have happen to your own forces. So, I like now Izzeride is keeping their commander relatively close, but at the same time, you, it's just always kind of tricky. You want to make sure that your workers are safe. You want to make sure that your commander is doing its own thing. Izzeride's commander could be up here and expanding a lot and getting quite a bit more metal. But I can see already they're quite, they're quite concerned. I mean, they can't really do much with the fleas. They can do some stuff, but not all that much, really, when you think about it. Because, again, they can't really ambush as well. The glaives outdamage the fleas. Fleas basically have to be outnumbering glaives, I think, three or four to one to be able to kill off glaives. And they don't. Now, granted, there's enough defenses that it's not as big of a deal. I mean, these rides commander can one-shot them, and there's some lotuses around the map, but these fleas can't really do much. So, waiting on a shift over to Redback's... I was guessing Redback Venom, but the Venom's already gone. Now, at this point, Fireplug is basically just expanding without anything getting in the way. And at the same time, Izzeride, I mean, they're trying. They're reclaiming well. It's just... They can only do so much with Reclaim, and their commander really should be going further forward. Especially since it has a lightning gun, it can get rid of most of the forces Fireplug tries to throw at it. All it has to do is go forward, take these metal extractors. That's an extra six metal per second. That's what the commander does on Living Lands. Workers is meant to go around the sides, but at this point, Fireplug is kind of... Kind of monopolized that. They have sides all over the place. It's becoming a lot harder for them to actually lose track of what's happening for Izzeride. And so it's a lot harder for Izzeride to do much. Although I like this. Fleas going around the back just to make sure there's no size in the back of the base. Very smart there, Izzeride. I like that. That is what you... I mean, in this setup, where there's not really a position for fleas to actually come in and deal a lot of damage, having them come in and just do some quick scouting for cloaked units is a really smart move. This one looks like Izzeride should be able to deal a fair bit of damage to the just surrounding forces to get rid of the contain. Again, I think Israel might be focusing a little bit too much on Lotuses right here, but I can see why. I mean, that's where Glaze are coming in, and Fireplug sending in Glaze five or six at a time. You need a couple Lotuses to deal with that. Of course, at this point, there's been a switch over already to Ronin because, yeah, that's what's going to happen. The thing about Spiders, or the spider Cloaky matchup, or most, honestly, X versus Spider matchups, is that whatever that X is is going to want to go Skirmishers as soon as possible because Spiders have a tricky time dealing with Skirmishers. Not terrible, but... 
Venom Redback is a reasonably strong force for getting rid of raiders and generally exploring the map and making sure nothing really gets the drop on you. But then once skirmishers come in, it's like either go for fleas, and at that point it's really easy to stop the fleas because you can just, like, as Firepluck is done, you include a few raiders and the fleas can do nothing. Or you set up recluses, which you need like three or four of in order to start actually doing a bunch of damage. At the same time, Scythe is coming in to Fireplug's, sorry, Israel's base as Fireplug is attacking from the front lines. And unfortunately, that Redback Venom combo can't really do much. Fortunately for them, they managed to escape. But unfortunately, again, that Scythe is coming in. Should be able to get rid of something? Actually, this is not a great position to be in. That Scythe managed to get rid of a worker, which is still good, and might be able to get, and will get rid of the Caretaker. But kills itself in the process. Still, though, that was 15, that was 17 and a half build power taken out from Izzeride's base. They don't have enough metal for that to actually be a huge deal yet, but that's still huge. I mean, they have to rebuild that Caretaker, and they're already desperately trying to rebuild the forces needed to get rid of everything here. I mean, the Ronin are set up. There's not really much to get rid of them. The Fleas are in place, but... Oh, the Glaives are down. The Glaives are not down, but they are too far back. The Fleas could come in and actually start taking out the Glaives. The, the Glaives, what am I saying? Taking out the Ronin. Of course, that leaves more, more of the opening for the Venom, allowing the Venom to get rid of everything and the Redbacks as well. There's not enough Ronin to stop the Venom-Redback combo from getting around this map without any problems. So these Glaives are basically dead. They're stuck against a wall. I don't know why they ran against that cliff, but it was the last thing they ever did. Same time, the Ronin are coming over to Rezerite's commander. Rezerite has finally moved forward into the center of the map. Still behind Fireplug in terms of overall economy, but if this is played properly, if they manage to hold off, if Rezerite manages to hold off Fireplug's assault here, Pushes in with the recluses and actually takes care of all these Ronin. Izzerite is going to have a much better position to actually attack Fireplug's base from. Because Fireplug right now, yes, they have stuff along the sides. But if Izzerite takes the center, takes this metal extractor, they'll have an easy way of coming in and tearing apart all this. Because Fireplug has not set up any units to deal with that. Same time, over in the northwest, that's a little bit harder to take care of. And I feel like Fireplug is stronger here. And is probably going to send forces over there. But at the same time, we are seeing a lot of Ronin come out the sides. Like, come out of the eastern side of the map. So it looks like we are just going to see mostly Rexes coming out from Izzeride for the time being, which, again, that does make sense. I mean, Izzeride, they want to make sure that they're getting rid of these skirmishers, and again, Rexes are kind of the most reliable way for spiders to do that, just to fight the skirmisher war. Fleas can do it, but it's so much harder to actually get them in and do the damage they need to do. Rexes, on the other hand, largely outrange other skirmishers, or at least should outrange Ronin, no problem. Yeah, range 455. Range, yeah, they outrange Ronin by a factor of like 1.3, 1.4. So yeah, this isn't a problem at all. And the Glaives, of course, they try to come in. The Venoms come in and take them out. So this is a really nice combo for Izzerite. Great positioning right now. The only downside is, of course, Izzerite doesn't have as much of an economy, but their positioning is amazing. It's perfect. All they really need to do is make sure that they're not losing the center as Fireplug is setting up themselves in the center. And Izzerite obviously doesn't want to lose their commander as they're getting rid of all these forces. But the Venoms able to come in here and actually just not even care about the matchup whatsoever. I mean, it's still a little bit tricky, but again, the fact that all these recluses are providing are providing covering fire means that the Venoms basically don't have to worry at all. They are able to outpace the Ronin. The Ronin are obviously worried about the recluses, so the Ronin can't just rush up against the Venoms and stop them. The only downside here is the Venom is going to be right next to this Lotus as it comes up. And there's only like 34 HP left on it. One stray shot will kill it, and that is the stray rocket that does it, but it still managed to do enough damage and open things up enough for Izzerite to actually take over the eastern side of the plateau. Izzerite still behind in economics, but they're at least in a reasonable position to take out this southeast base and possibly take it for themselves. Again, going in with about half dozen to a dozen fleas, probably going to rush in there to get rid of the Ronin. Or at least use that as extra support. But really, the Recluses, they're, they've been the MVPs. As they often are. And that's why we see Recluses come in to, for the Spiders to help get rid of the Skirmishers. Because, really, Recluses are what you use. And Fleas actually coming in to try to take care of all this down here. I do not agree with this in the slightest. There are two Lotuses here. The Fleas will all die before anything happens. If the Recluses come in and actually deal some damage on top of that, it might work. I do like the fact that the Fleas did stop outside of the range of the Lotuses, though. That's... That is correct. Unfortunately, they are rushing in. The Lotuses will take them out. That was after the third Lotus came up as well. The Conjurer might go down. The Conjurer does go down. So at least this can't be rebuilt. So the Fleas did some damage. Suicide Assault, but it was worth it. Did get rid of the Conjurer. This entire southeast area is essentially only as alive as Izzerai lets it be. If Izzerai goes to attack it, it's done. It cannot be rebuilt without coming through this passage here. And Izzerai pretty much has control over this eastern valley. So that is it. At this point, 
Fire block has switched over to gunships, so that is a bit of a problem. But if Israel can at least hold on, get some tarantulas up, and take care of that, they'll be fine. Heck, even redbacks would do the trick. They're just lotuses. Sorry, locusts. And locusts do not do well against riot units. Unfortunately, no such riot units are in play. There's no stardusts or redbacks or anything yet. But there will be very shortly, so that these locusts won't have all that much time to work with. Unfortunately for the commander, they are in a really bad spot to actually deal with the locusts, but that's well, actually not too bad. Between the lightning gun and the stinger, that's pretty effective to get rid of them. Unfortunately, it does get rid of the skirmishes that were being built up. Fortunately, though, again, these locusts are not doing well against what's been built up. I'm not sure... Fireplug, what are you going for? Still going for locusts. Just going mass locusts. Figures they can just out eco Israel, and that's not an incorrect assumption, but Israel already getting the anti air defenses up. A little bit caught in the back foot, unfortunately, but it's still fine. The locusts are going down. As long as Israel can take care of the reclaim fields that are being built, which I kind of doubt. Fireplug's got the commander. They've got a lot of pressure here on the map. Like, southeast, not so much, so Israel can pretty easily take that and split the map in half that way, and I really wish Israel would do that, because they really need to. I can see some reason why they wouldn't, because they've been playing very timid this entire game. But, gotta be honest, they've got this, and it's theirs. They can just take it. If they can just get the recluses into position, take care of the lo lotuses, that's it. This southeast is done. This area here is it's done. It can just go away right now. But at the same time, Firepluck coming in with so many forces, and Izzeride coming with the fleas, I really don't get the fleas. Like, they are forcing Firepluck to build a lot more defenses than they normally would need to. But at the same time... It's not really lasting all that long, and with the Wasp coming in here, that this southeast area is going to be rebuilt. That southeast area is back on the track, so... Yeah, Israel they had an opportunity to completely conquer the southeast and did not take it, because they were kind of distracted. There were other forces coming in. The Locusts has definitely caused problems. But yeah, there's only so much that can be done with that. And now at this point, Israel they have no Recluses left. They have to rebuild them. Going instead for Hermits, actually. Going to be just trying to push forward with that. I don't totally agree. Ronin do a fine job against Hermits, but I can kind of see why. The Hermits come in and tank, the Venoms come in behind that, use them to stun out all these, all the Ronin, and then the Redbacks come in on top of that to deal the damage. That makes sense to me. It's a bit of a tricky setup, but it would work. Same time, though, Izzeride is getting further and further behind. They're doing fine on attrition, but they're getting further and further behind when it comes to actual economy, and Firepluck right now, like, they're taking full advantage of that, and I really wish this would be small. <sighs> they're taking full advantage of that at this point, Israel is ahead in terms of army value, but again, it's just attrition. And that will soon turn around. I like to use the Venoms here, I like to use the hill here, but if Fireplug gets on top of this hill, or it just has vision of the hill, which, I mean, that's what's being provided here right now by the lo Locusts, there's really not much that can be done. At the same time, a couple of Hermits coming in the southeast, but again, this is just a little bit too late. Like, Israel was not prepared to help deal with that, and... Didn't even expand here and they had the chance, kind of surprisingly. Like, yeah, they broke they broke the worker, so this was open. It could have gotten an extra four metal per second. It's a bit risky, and I realize this has been playing timid this entire game, but it's clear they don't really have to. They're actually not doing too badly overall. Like, they're holding Fireplug off. They've been playing as Fireplug for 13 minutes and actually holding them off pretty well. I mean, if people in the chat going, Fireplug getting bullied out of a 1v1. Yeah, Fireplug's actually getting bullied in a 1v1. Fireplug is not, is, Fireplug's a good player. I have a bit of a tendency to go for slightly weird strategies and resign if they don't work in team games, but now they're a strong mechanical player. It's just that Izzeride is also quite strong. It's just that I think Izzeride lacks the confidence, realizing they are that strong of a player. They can go forward, they can expand, they can do a lot of damage. They will have to deal with this, though, but they have fleas. This is actually where fleas are going to be really useful. Getting rid of all these warriors here. Now, granted, Izzeride did go for a recon commander, so they should be able to get out of there, and I think if the Reavers are spotted... When I say warriors, I mean Reavers. I think if the Reavers are spotted... Izzeride might get the clue that there is an Irist Reaver set. But it doesn't look like it. Now, Izzeride not too concerned about that at all. In fact, going for a crab. Kind of the worst time to go for a crab right now. I mean, it sort of describes Izzeride's game plan overall has been... The, the timing's just been a little bit off. And I understand that. I I can be like that too. It's, it's not an uncommon thing. It, a lot of 0k comes down to guessing what your opponent's going to do and making sure that you have a response to what your opponent's probably going to do based on what you can see. And at this point, Firepluck making sure that Izzerai can see nothing as their entire force is cloaked, which is usually a bit of a hint on its own. Unfortunately, that is going to be the end of Izzerai's day if... I mean, not even if. This is done. The, the Reavers needed to be stopped around here. At this point, they're already inside the base. There is nothing that can stop them. The crab will be up, but it's not going to be enough. 
Actually, might not even be up. Oh, just barely, just barely, just barely, and not even enough. Gets one shot off, and that is it. Izzeride probably going to throw in the towel at this point. They have been hitting the back lines too hard to really come back from this. And yep, there's the GG. Iris Reaver. That is a thing that happens a lot these days in 0k. It's worth keeping an eye on. If your opponent's playing Cloakie, an Iris Reaver ball is a very common late game strategy. Because it is a very strong late game strategy. It is a bit of a risky one because it does mean that if you if it screws up, you're kind of hooped. Because that's a lot of metal. I mean, there's some that died. But that would have been about 3,000 metal worth of units. That was most of Firepluck's army, actually. So, if Firepluck had lost that force, like, here? If, like, Fleas had come in, detected it, and then all the Reckless's came in and started tearing apart all the all the Reavers, that could have been death. But overall, though, I felt like Izzeride was doing a fine job holding on, like, definitely in terms of matchup knowledge, definitely in terms of units used, definitely in terms of positioning. They were doing a fine job. I feel like the Fleas might have been used a little bit too long, but the switchover was fine. The switchover to Venom Redback, that was perfect. The switchover to Recluse, exactly right. The only thing I found that Izzeride seemed to be lacking was confidence. They seemed to be a little bit scared about the fact that they were fighting Firepluck. It's like, yeah, you're fighting Firepluck, but it's just a game. Like, it, you and them are matched up, so go for it. Because the only reason Firepluck's going to beat you is if... Well, okay, there's a few reasons, but at this point, for the way Izzeride was playing, I said the only reason Firepluck won is that Izzeride expected Firepluck to win, and it was a self-fulfilling prophecy because Izzeride really did not push as hard as they could have, really didn't take the economy they could have taken, and certainly didn't take advantage of when they broke the southeast and could have just swept in almost immediately to take the rest of it out. So yeah, that's the thing. It just Israel felt like they were playing a little bit scared, and Firepluck kind of didn't. Because Firepluck usually doesn't play scared. Usually they play overconfident and then do something silly and then die. And Izzeride, they were playing pretty solid and pretty safe. They just If they pushed forward a little more, I think they could have taken it. But looking at the army value, it's several times it was a, way ahead. I mean, metal use, yeah, Firepluck was ahead in there, but when the army value was way ahead, that could have been... And that was around, I think, the point where this was broken. That could have been converted into taking out this base, taking out this. Like, breaking most of Firepluck's economy would have knocked Firepluck down another 8 metal per second, which at that point would have actually put them about even. Or very nearly even. Firepluck would not have been able to get as much of a runaway army construction, because Izzeride was, for the long time, doing really well on attrition. It was only near the end that it started to turn around, but... It was a good period where Izzeride was doing fine in attrition, and that would have been... That would have been perfect. That would have made... Like, that exact period, too, actually. If Firepluck didn't have the metal income, Izzeride could have just run away with it, taken a bunch of metal of their own, and then taken the game. Oh, wrong map. You're right. Shoot. Sorry, it was Living Lands. I'm just... I don't even know why I've had the map here, honestly. I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the description. It says what the map is, so... Yeah. Anyway, that... Uh, might be able to do one more. I'm not really sure, but... Nah, I'm just gonna call it. Sorry, I've... I've still gotta make sure to take care of myself. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Sorry it's a bit of a shorter stream than usual. I should be able to go back to the normal time and everything probably in a couple weeks. I'm guessing from what I've from what I've heard from the people I've been seeing to actually, you know, physical therapy type things. It should be another couple weeks to fully heal up. So, yeah, sorry. I just really don't want to harm... Like, I don't want to hurt myself in the meantime. So, I... Actually... Hmm... Wow, got a lot of people coming in to watch it. Durr, this is such a... Alright, fine. I'll do one more. I'll do a shorter one. I'll do one more. It'll be... No. To find one, that would actually be a good idea, but... Actually, let's do one on my favorite map ever. Trojan Hills. Okay, we're gonna have Diamond versus Etsuri on Trojan Hills, since Diamond is not really streaming as much anymore, I don't think. I don't think people have seen this already. So, yeah, Diamond versus Etsuri on Trojan Hills. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.